Hello friends, today is Sunday, June 23rd, 2024. Summer just started here in Atlanta, Georgia. It hasn't rained for over 10 days, I think. And temperatures have been very, very high. So everybody's struggling here with their gardens. Uh, my garden is not an exception and i'm gonna give you a quick look of how things are, are looking right now um, it's uh it's this is concerning actually uh, i do have a uh, an irrigation system and i'm watering the best i can but still maples don't seem to like this hot and humid weather and they're craving for for rain so i'm i'm concerned um, as you can see, if I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you here, this is some kind of like emergency room area. Well, I have a couple of trees planted. Um, I have this ukigumo that um, still holding some variegation right there. But um, then I also have a clethra plant that is about ready to bloom. But then I'm also using this area because it's getting water from the irrigation system as a recovery area for things like this uh, Aconitifolium Japanese maple. See, the thing with Japanese maples is that they stress very easily with, uh, with conditions such as this one. Uh, so kind of like from one day to the next, all of their leaves or their leaves start wilting this is another one this is a miwa that was looking great and all of a sudden you can see uh, some of the leaves are wilted some of the leaves are still okay um, but the trees are under a lot of stress right now with this weather um, it's it's about 86 degrees right now probably feels like 92 with the hum humidity and uh, it's gonna be 97 and it's gonna feel like over 100 in the afternoon so so anyways this is a, a red wing that I have uh, in this pot that is looking okay um, but let me walk through a little bit here uh, you can probably hear the cicadas are in full swing sign of the times here in in the south I haven't had a cicada invasion, but um, like other parts of the countries, but uh, but yeah. So let me walk around and show you some of the things that are in the garden. This is a wonderful uh, the ruby slippers hydrangea um, that was all white a couple of uh, or maybe like a few days ago. So now you can see that the panicles are starting to turn to red. Um, also, another, another basically result of this super dry weather is that um, even like my large trees, the canopy trees here are all stressed and they're dropping a lot of leaves and debris uh, from not getting much water at all so um, so that's what you can see in this case this particular um, leopard plant which is a variegated version of a leopard plant this one is called firefly you can see there's uh, leaf debris everywhere and that's kind of like the pattern that you will see in the garden I need to uh, get the blower and <laughs> and work on that, but it's so hot right now. This is a uh, Japanese maple, red one called Yasmin. This one is in the ground, and that's the other difference uh, that's it, that it makes, you know, plants that are in the ground are much more resilient than uh, the plants that are in pots. I have a lot of potted plants due to space limitations, so, uh, the ones that are stressed out are mostly the ones that are in pots right now. Um, 
So this one, speaking of pot, this one is doing okay. Uh, this one is Shoujo Hime. And, you know, I'm pretty happy how um, they're keeping the colors. Here in full shade, both Shoujo Hime and Yasmin are, are both maintaining their purple and red colors. And you can see how nice it looks with that Chartreuse Hosta on the bottom left. Um, but yeah, let, let me keep walking here. Uh, that is my Edgeworthia. Right now it's about 11 o'clock. So dappled shade, you can see sun filtering through the, the woods up there. Um, this one, I love this one. You don't see this one. Uh, on many gardens. This one is Utsu Semi. Very, very cool tree. See if I can get a better look at the, at the leaves. But they're kind of curly and large and fairly thick. So Utsu Semi is doing well and I'm glad. If I keep going here, there's the uh, bird bath. Keep trying to clean and trying to make sure mosquitoes don't hatch in there. Uh, this conifer, this Hartsman Silverlock, is doing well. A lot of the conifers are browning and such, but this one is doing quite well. My yellow threads looking really nicely. The other thing that I'm having issues with everywhere, but you know, you kind of have to let nature do its thing sometimes. It's spider mites. You can see they're all over this maple. And right here, I'm trying to work on having more pollinators on this shady side. So Agastachi, is in full bloom now. It's kind of thin for an Agastachi because of, you know, it's not getting full, full sun, but it's still attracting pollinators, still managed to bloom. So having pollinators and Japanese maples all together, yeah, makes me very, very excited. So you see there's one working this flower there's a little butterfly flying around. Um, it's nice. Nice to have wildlife in a Japanese, in a mostly Japanese maple garden. So, um, what else do we have here? Oh, we have, uh, what is it? Gold beard, beard gold, something like that. Uh, Black beard's gold, sorry about that. This one is also looking pretty good transitioning um, coming back here this one is Aralia Sun King I like this plant so much that I have three of them next to I think that's a curly fries or praying hands I, I can recall Hasta and the Ajuga next to it the dark purple Ajuga all looking good um, black hole black hole is looking okay uh, I don't see any signs of stress which is great this paper bark maple it's also doing okay Let's see, down here you can see, I love how it's starting to peel. It's a young tree, but I can see some peeling on the bark, the paper bark. So, um, I just got this Agastache here. Again, I'm trying to invite more pollinators to this partially shade garden. So Agastaches are one of the best for that. We have a uh, rainbow here, 
Rainbow is doing okay. Um, let's see. Vervina borneriensis, that's another plant that is a magnet for pollinators. So, again, trying to bring more pollinators on this side of the garden. So this one is filigree. As you can see, it has the, uh, the variegation and the veining on this lace cap maple. It's one of the few that can do that. But this one, it, it is showing some stress. You see some browning on the leaves and things like that. Um, but yeah, we just need that rain. <laughs> Okay, uh, eye candy is looking good. Another thing that I learned, so you can see the eye candy variegation, which is beautiful. But when you start seeing uh, kind of like fall colors in some of these leaves, that means that the tree is stressing. So that's a sign of stress right there. But the rest of the tree looks pretty good. You see, summer and still holding that nice variegation. Uh, Sherwood Elfin. This one looks amazing. Deep maroon colors, even in this hot and humid summer that we just started. Very nice. Uh, Benny Gaza being attacked by the spider mites you know it's a it's a constant battle but you know they they'll have to fight it there's so much i can do all right uh, and i have to relocate i relocated a bunch of these plants that i had in places where they were not getting much water or it was hard for me to water like twice a day so this is basically one of them, Benihoshi. Um, it kind of stopped the stress by relocating it here, but um, but yeah, you can see it's uh, it's struggling a little bit. Fairy hair. It's losing its hair. <laughs> um, I guess that browning is like an equivalent of a a gray hair on a person but yeah um, it's it's kind of troublesome to see them like this but um, again one does the best you can can find nature sometimes and the rest you know there's uh, there's the little guys here that are doing okay I just noticed another one that literally just shut down on me and I'm gonna walk towards it but then I see something like the orange fan and you know makes me happy <laughs> orange fan is one of my favorite like of the bigger leaves type of maples it's japonicum uh, not a lot of people have it but uh, I guess it's kind of hard to find but orange fan is really a must have. All right. Then hostas have been blooming. Maybe they're past, some of them are past their peak, but um, those hostas also are very pollinator friendly. So, oh gosh, and it looks like my carnival got knocked down here so I need to work on that uh, okay so this is what happens from one day to the next they shut down and this one is let's see I cannot tell it is a Sao Tome so I'm gonna move it from here but yeah I know uh, add a comment and, and, 
And let me know about your experience, if you're also seeing this kind of uh, behavior. I was at a nursery yesterday and the owner said he couldn't keep up. I mean, his maples were shutting down like this. So, you know, hopefully they, they will lose their leaves. We're gonna get some, hopefully we'll get some rain. I don't think there's any rain predicted for the next week or so. But um, hopefully after it, it does all the shedding of the leaves, maybe we'll, it will bounce back with maybe summer flushes. But yeah, it's kind of heartbreaking. Some of these are looking okay. Um, more tree debris. Uh, again, it's, uh, it's a tough time for my maples. Let's walk this way. This is my purple ghost. I think it's looking okay. Uh, and I'm getting all the spider webs here. As I'm walking through the forest, I'm glad the firefly is doing great. As far as firefly is one of my top five, so. Um, excited that he's doing his thing. Then Esk Sunset is looking good. Oh, oh, I see another casualty. I see another casualty right here. So this is Tiger Rose. Oh, see. Like yesterday, this was okay. No brown leaves. All of a sudden, boom. Leaves are brown and the sky is gray. No, just kidding. Um, some of them are okay, but if it keeps going, the whole tree is gonna turn like that. So, ah, oh, man, it's tough. Uh, this one is um, Bronze Age. Looking okay. Uh, Otto's dissectum. Otto's dissectum. He has some browning there. Yayoi Gasa. It's looking good. All right. So you're discovering some of these with me. Uh, I mean, Yesterday, this was a totally different environment or, or condition. And now uh, I'm finding more and more casualties. So my arium is looking good. But see, the arium is on the ground. It's like planted in the ground. And it's doing okay. Oregon Sunset to its left is in a pot and it's doing okay as well. And then to its right, this is, um, which one is, this one is also Midori, and it seems to be going well. Um, Hanamatoi, please, please don't do that to me. So right now, don't brown, please. Right now you're looking beautiful. Gosh, am I crazy? I'm, I'm talking like to the plants. Anyways, but Hanamatoi is looking fantastic. I'm still shocked to see some pink, or a lot of pink actually, this late in the season, late in June. All right, my big Sangokaku, oh, which is there. It's a very well-established plant, so I'm not concerned about that. Uh, moving on, I had to move my... Uh, what was it called here? Uh, one of the weeping trees that I had there because it was all browning. This one is a Katsura. It's doing okay. Um, 
baby lace, I moved it here because I was starting to see some browning and I really don't want to lose this baby lace or put, put it into any risk anymore. Uh, remember I was telling you about leaves changing color? That's an example. See, it kind of looks like it's starting to look like, like it's fall. <laughs> some reddish going on, but that means that it's under a lot of stress. This autumn fire. Let's see, curly lamp post. <laughs> I love this. This texture is like so thick and like hard. It's a, it's a wonderful tree. And, and it grows very columnar and skinny. So I'm glad that one is doing okay. Nathan. Uh, wonderful tree as well but you can see right there that it's doing some of that browning okay and oh boy here's Ariadne shutting itself off from the stress I mean I don't mean this to sound like a really gloomy video but um, but it's reality so and I'm curious to see if some of you are experiencing the same especially in the southeast of the US uh, black lace it's like heat what heat <laughs> I mean it's looking great uh, hasn't lost its color at all and next to it is rainy day showing this variegation very kind of like eye candy and pastel shows no sign of stress thank goodness right here we have firefall and right below it I put my cherry man that is looking rough um, so I move it to this place where it will get more water and less sun see if that helps this one is radiant looking radiant uh, very good and um, again this one is on the ground so you can see there that's where it's planted so that makes a big difference i wish i had a huge place where i can plant everything but unfortunately i don't nebula doing good sister ghost looking okay uh, i don't see any browning and mikazuki is doing well as well let's keep going here um, Shazam is doing good but uh oh this guy is pretty hidden here I haven't noticed it but yep this one is dragon ghost browning on top not looking that great right now Brunera it's okay uh, Hinoki looking good Vic Pink looking great Japanese Lantern seems to be doing great Dragon Master all good uh, Kiyohime looking full and nice and this one is uh, Kurohime Let's take some of the tree debris out uh, it's looking good um, and again I'm building on my 
pollinator attraction project and you can see the um, these are cardinal flowers and these are supposed to be or they are supposed they're going to be attracting a lot of pollinators right now I'm here apparently they're very good for uh, for uh, Jeez, hummingbirds, couldn't think of the word. And that's another hasta bloom. And more signs of stress here. In this case, this one is a Mikado. You can see it's having some fall looking colors there at the bottom, but at, on the top, it looks okay. So, and there, more signs of stress. This one is Morton. I love the tree, please don't die. <laughs> Look at the leaves on the right, uh, just love that shape. But the leaves in the middle changed to red and now they are all crunchy. Um, Amagi Shigure is looking good. And Miss Maple is looking good as well. So, uh, Anyways, let's move on to this area. Some of my hydrangeas are kind of like losing their colors. Some of them are still blooming and looking good. And this is another recovery area that I have under shade. You can see, oh man. Yeah, and this one totally lost all its leaves. Tana. I think I'm noticing a pattern with these kind of like terracotta pots. Um, they dry out quicker, so a lot of them in those pots have basically gotten the, the stress. This one is Dr. Brown, lost a lot of its leaves. Marielle, fully brown, and uh, Sweet Lorraine, stressed as well, Hana Fubuki, and uh, this is, these are some plants that I, I had a kind neighbor um, post on Facebook, they were giving away some plants, and I got a salvia, black and blue, and aster, and euphorbia. And these are some that I trying to rescue or save from getting too stressed. This is a Joe Pie weed that is variegated. And, and yeah, so overall things are very stressed right now. Uh, the bleacher area, oh, I just see another one that is under stress. Um, yeah, it's been a very very stressful summer for the maples okay so that's for the woodland area shady side let's move towards the sunny side pollinator side of things and right now a nurses are having sales on things like daylilies so we went to a nursery yesterday and got a bunch of day lilies that were on sale so these are, are all kind of like waiting to be potted right now it's too hot um, it's kind of windy right now so bear with me so moving on to this this is my west side of the house that get a lot of after afternoon sun so the ginkgo is doing well my uh, tamukeyama in this pot is doing great so i have two trees one on each side of the steps here in the front of the house and this orangeola is totally feeling the stress i've been watering a lot yet you can see how stress stressed it is um, bunch of hosta flowers next to my um, Chameleon Tree Gables Glory Japanese Maple But uh, let's move on to this side 
the Katsura tree, red fox, Katsura tree is looking good. This little guy is not loving it here. Um, conifers are hard to grow in the south. This fire glow is lo looking good. Again, the red fox Katsura, it's okay. And what else we have here? We have a um, the magic summer dogwood. It's doing well. This eclipse hydrangea is getting eaten by slugs. The uh, red bud golden falls. It's doing good. And now uh, this is where we're starting to see uh, pollinator magnet type of plants with this butterfly bush. And I'm having some uh, alliums going on and black eyed Susans are getting ready to pop here. These are some daisies next to the Roman candles, Podocarpus to the left. Hot blonde maple is doing okay. Um, lots of spiders on it right now. It's getting some bleaching from the sun, as you can see. Um, that's a variegated hardy hibiscus that hasn't bloomed yet. What else do we have here? My large tamukeyama of course it's doing fine being on the ground and for many many years established this is uh siriu again doing well uh let's look this way here tuamblis red sentinel it's looking okay and uh the carolina sweetheart that I recently planted is surviving the heat. So uh, hopefully we'll make it through the summer. Oh, a robin just flew by and the umbrella pine is doing well. And Irene right there doing okay. Well, these succulents are loving this, of course, this dry, hot weather. Uh, royalty looking okay. Um, this was Satomi Dogwood. Ruby Ridge, mm, not sure about it, but doing the best it can. Bunch of Crocosmias. If you don't have crocosmias, I mean, some of them are mostly spent, but you can see how pollinators are. Well, where do you go? I just had one. Okay, there, there is one. But it's, uh, it's a magnet for pollinators. This one is uh, Hino Tsukasa. One of my favorite reds. Some coneflowers, uh, liatris there. And this one is sapphire nymph. I can think of this, the name of this one, snake master or something like that. It's a long, long stalk, but this one is interesting because the little pollinators are all over it. They're, you're always seeing, it's kind of windy right now, so <laughs> it doesn't stay put, but uh, you see a lot of little pollinators all the time. Uh, what else do we have here? Some Stokes asters that are now past their prime. Uh, let me move this way. Some coneflowers here. Huge coneflowers.
This is a chartreuse leaf um, butterfly bush. This is a dwarf butterfly bush. Uh, and this one is Hub's red dwarf. Hub's willow. Sorry, half Hub's willow. That's the name of this one. Lighting is not the greatest right now, so bear with me. These are volunteer, uh, I guess, salvias. They're just dancing in the wind. Again, more pollinators uh, loving this plant. <laughs> this one is looking very rough. It's uh, burgundy lime. Uh, look at this guy. It's Sunday, so it's still sleeping, I guess. Sleeping on the salvia. Um, burgundy lime, yeah, it's full sun right here. And it's not loving it, but I'm giving it a you better get used to it type of attitude. Um, this one is Benny Otaki. It's changing to green, but it's doing okay. Another sleepy bee. Oh no, it's awake. So this is a lavender. Uh, this St. John's worst or wort. It's, uh, it's past this peak blooming period, but still attracting a lot of bees. And it is under my pride and joy, this uh, Rising Sun Redbud. So, oh, nice. I just noticed this hibiscus just bloomed for the first time. This is a Texas R Red Star hibiscus, I believe it's called. Lots of like uh, more black eye Susans all bunched up together and coneflowers. Here we have dragon tears, Japanese maple. It's doing all right. Now very happy with this um, blue lu Pinus parviflora. It's taking the heat exceptionally well. Um, I guess for that reason, it's gotta be one of my favorite conifers. Uh, this is an aster that is getting a lot of wind. This is some kind of either like a bebone type or, or maybe like a uh, basil, I, I can't remember, but it's been very active with pollinators. Okay, the other problem that I've been having is um, Japanese beetles. They've been eating, like in this case, this buckeye. It's, looks like it's feeding a lot of beetles. But again, I've been fighting them with soapy water, neem oil, all kinds of stuff. It's, uh, it's a losing proposition. Bee balm here, uh, full of powdery mildew. They are famous for that. Oh. Uh, some of them are more mildew resistant, some varieties. This is a very interesting sort of uh, coneflower. We got, uh, I think it's called Ken's Gold Oregano. Let's go up here. My espaliered apple tree is uh, producing some apples. You can see there four different kinds of apples. More Japanese beetle action there. You can see the, you can kind of see through the leaves the way they eat it. And then right here we have 
more coneflowers, thistle, like the blue red combination with the two flowers. This jopai weed is about to open. Uh, let's see what else we have here. This lily has been blooming heavily lately. And right here I have this Japanese maple, um, which is called Sunny Disposition. And because of the name, I put it in full sun and it's doing okay, even with this crazy heat. All right, so here you see butterfly bush on this side. And on the other side, you see the flamethrower red bud. And on this other side have blanket flower or Dilardia. Red Hot Pokers and I cannot recall the name of that plant, but it's great. There's one there and there's a volunteer there, which I don't mind. Because again, more blooms, more pollinators. And here we have the variegated butterfly bush. Variegation, of course, in my garden, always. This one is Rhode Island Red. Seems to be doing okay. It's kind of surrounded by this insomnia. And uh, there's some Coryopsis here. This one is a, uh, I can't think of the name right now. And then I have this shorter version of Crocosmia and they're orange. I prefer this over the larger Crocosmias that are red because they don't flop. And I actually kind of like the, um, the orange better than the red. See, one there is really coming across through the Texas sage, which is this guy here. Um, what else? These are blackberry lilies. I have a lot of them. And uh, this one is a milkweed host plant for the monarchs, butterflies. And you can see it's, uh, it creates these cones and then it opens all of a sudden from one day to the next and it's full of those little flying seeds with, yet, with like white feathers that keep flying all over the place. This is Stachys humello. Most of it's spent now, I have to deadhead. And this is a uh, blood... Uh, oh, look. Huh. Look at that guy. He's probably having a good lunch. This is a blood dogwood. It's looking really good. I love this tree. And here I'm going to just give a little uh, overview of what's going on. The hibiscus, hardy hibiscus, samarific series are starting to open. Huge, <laughs> huge, huge, huge blooms. And then you can see it's going to bloom quite a bit. There's a bunch of buds there. I have two kinds here. Uh, so far, only the red blooming one has opened, but those blooms next to it are for a kind of like a whitish pinkish one. Then I have um, Agapanthus here that are, have opened. 
and more pollinator action there. And then obviously the lilies have been quite proliferous this year. So what's not to like about lilies? Um, let's see, there's more agapanthus, more lilies, more lilies, agapanthus, and then red hot poker. And then to wrap up this video, this is a hot sauce. Heat tolerant oliveranium from the Heat Seeker series. And this guy right here is a liquid, liquid amber sweet gum, Silver King, variegated. I'm gonna turn around slowly and thank you all for spending this time with me and if you like it please comment like subscribe and by the way i'm going to be visiting my folks down in argentina on the next the next two to three weeks so i won't have any videos of my garden but i'm gonna record a video of my garden my parents garden in argentina which it's winter there so it's gonna be a nice Nice break from the hot, humid season here that we're having. All right, see you all then. Have a good rest of the day.